Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh video of this lecture series. In this video, we will solve problems which utilize the concepts that were discussed in the previous videos. We have already solved similar problems here, but I wanted to do these small problems just to cover more examples. So, we will have several problems uh, in this video and I will just solve them very quickly to understand the theory of these problems and to check more detailed problem solving just check the previous videos okay so let us begin so the first problem of today is from jam geophysics exam of 2006 and this problem states that the root mean square speed of an ideal gas made up of molecules of molecular weight 0.0831 kg per mole at temperature 300 Kelvin is and we have to choose one of the correct answer and the universal gas constant is given. So I will just start with the formula we know that VRMS is root of 3 kbt by m here m is the mass of a molecule so mass of 1 mole of gas will be m let's say capital m and it will be n a times n where n is the Avogadro's number so we can write n is m by n a let me write it properly n is capital n over any so here we can put this formula which will give 3 kbt by m times any and we also know that kb is equal to r over n a so k b times n a k b times n a will be equal to r so we will have p r m is equal to 3 r t over m and this will be 3 times 0 0.3 3 times 8.31 times 300 by 0 0.0831 so this will be 300 times 300 0 1 so the answer will be 300 meter per second so we have PRM is equal to 300 meter per second so let me just put a box here this is our answer and in the problem option number c is the correct one okay we'll move on to the next problem okay so this is the second problem of today's video this problem also was given in 
jam geophysics exam but it appeared in 2005 okay so the problem states that n moles of an ideal gas are in volume v by 2 of an absolute of an isolated chamber of total volume v the other other half of the chamber is empty now the valve in the wall separating these two halves is opened and the gas fills the whole volume the change in entropy of the gases so we have to calculate the change in the entropy of the gas so let us say that delta s is the change in entropy of the gas and this problem is an example of free expansion so for free expansion we know that the change in entropy of gas is given by nr ln vf over phi now let us define this term n is the number of moles r is the universal gas constant vi is the initial volume and vf is the final volume so from the problem we have that vi is v by 2 and vf is v so vf over vi is so with that we have delta s is equal to nr ln2 let me put the box around this and this is our answer so checking the options here we see that option number c is the correct answer now here i have just used the formula now to check how this formula is derived and how to do these problems in a detailed manner please check video 3 and video 4 okay so we'll move on to the next problem this is the third problem this problem appeared in 2010. So the problem states that uh, one mole of an ideal gas is kept in one half of an adiabatic container and the other half is empty. The two halves of the container are separated by an adiabatic wall. The gas is now allowed to expand freely into the empty half by removing the wall. So this is just free expansion.
for free expansion we know that delta s of the gas is nr ln pf over vi which is greater than zero and entropy change of the surrounding is zero and free expansion is a isothermal process so dt is zero now let us check the options option a is there is an increase in the entropy of the gas this is correct option b is there is an increase in the temperature of the gas this is not true because this is an isothermal process c is there is a decrease in the entropy of the gas this is again not true because delta s g is greater than zero and option d is there is a decrease in the temperature of the gas this is again not true so option a is the correct one okay let's go to the next problem okay so this is the fourth problem of this video this is from maxwell Boltzmann distribution and the problem appeared in jam geophysics 2011 the problem states that consider the speed of gas molecules in a container the ratio of speeds of the gas molecules at 27 degree centigrade to that at minus 73 degree centigrade is so we have to calculate that now we know that v rms is root of v k v t over m where t is the absolute temperature m is mass of molecule not r kb is Boltzmann constant and we have also calculated the average velocity which is also given by this formula 8 kbt by pi m so what we generally see is that the velocity is proportional to root of t so in our case then velocity at 27 degree centigrade with respect to velocity at minus 73 degree centigrade will be root of 273 plus 27 by root of 273 minus 73 and that is going to be 300 by 200 root so we will have velocity at 27 degree centigrade divided by velocity at 73 degree centigrade is equal to root of 3 by 2 so option a is the correct answer here okay to the next problem okay so welcome to the 
fifth problem of this video and this problem was given in just thousand thirteen exam and the problem states that for a diatomic ideal gas near room temperature what fraction of the heat supplied is available for external work if the gas is expanded at constant pressure so that gas is expanded at constant pressure and we have to calculate what fraction of heat supplied is available for external work now we know that for ideal diatomic gas if which is the number of degrees of freedom is 5. So, in this case Cp will be 7 by 2r, where the general formula is F plus 2 by 2R and similarly CV will be 5 by 2R where the general formula is F by 2R. Now since the gas is expanded at constant pressure the total heat given can be written as dq equal to cpdt because the gas is expanded at constant pressure and you have to know amount of heat expanded for external work so let us go back to the first law of thermodynamics again we have dq is du plus pdv so this part corresponds to external work. So, PDV is dq minus du and we know that du is CVDT because for CV PDV is 0. We have discussed this in detail in the first two lectures. So, from here we can say DW is DQ minus DU which is CP minus CV times DT and from Mears formula this is RDT. So, the fraction of heat supplied which can be used as work done 
is dw by dq which is rdt by cpdt and here dt's will cancel out we will have r by plus 2 by 2 times r r will cancel out and the answer will be 2 over f plus 2 so for diatomic gases it will be 2 over 7 So, we have dw over dq is 2 over 7. So, let me box this. So, this is our answer and in the problem option D matches with our answer. So, this is the correct answer. Okay. So, to the next problem. Okay. So, this is the sixth problem of today. And this problem appeared in JAM 2015 of physics exam and here the problem states that a rigid triangular molecule consists of three non-collinear atoms joined by rigid rods. The constant pressure molar specific heat of an ideal gas consisting of such molecules is. So, we have to calculate Cp which is the molar specific heat at constant pressure and we have a rigid triangular molecule where all the atoms here are non-collinear. So, again we have to find the number of degrees of freedom. And here in this case it will be 3 for each atom. So, 3 times 3 minus 3 which is due to this rigid constraints that the distance between the atoms will be constant. So, this will be 6. In fact, for any polyatomic molecule where in a molecule we have 3 or more than that atoms and if okay sorry for the interruption so as i was saying for any polyatomic molecule if the distances between the atoms are fixed. So, in case of rigid polyatomic molecules, the degrees of freedom will always be 6. So, this is just like the rigid body problem of classical mechanics where the degrees of freedom of a rigid body is 6. So, now we can just calculate the C 
cp we know the formula this is f plus 2 by 2r which is 8 over 2r or 4r so the answer in this case is cp equal to 4r so let me write that this is the answer and if we go back to the problem we see that the option c resembles our answer and this is the correct one okay so to the next problem okay so this is the seventh problem of this video and this problem appeared in jam 2016 exam but the problem states that for an ideal guess which one of the following ps diagrams is valid so we have been given ts diagrams of an isocodic and an isobaric process so we have isocodic and isobaric process where isobaric means that the pressure is constant and isochoric means that the volume is constant so now we have to obtain the ps diagram for this process So I have not touched upon this isocodic isobary process in detail and also the type diagram, TS diagram, PV diagrams, I have not discussed them. I will discuss them in a later video with detail. But this problem here, it is very similar to the problems that we have done earlier. That's why I have included it here. So let us see how this can be done. So basically, we have to obtain t as a function of the entropy which will give us these plots so let us see how that can be done so first for isobaric process we have dq equal to cpdt over t I'm sorry we have dq equal to cpdt which means ds equal to cpdt over t now how can we calculate acr that will be done by an integration cp is constant dt over t so we have let this is going from initial to final temperature initial to final state then sf minus si 
is equal to cp ln tf over ti now if we want to do this integration as an indefinite integral we will have s equal to cp ln t plus some constant and let us call the constant to be s0 so ln t is s minus s0 over cp which implies t is exponential of s minus s0 over cp okay let me box out this answer and similarly we will do this for an iso coding process so this was for iso body and this is for iso coding process where volume is constant again here dq is cvdt or ds is cvdt by t which implies that s is cv ln t plus s0 now t is exponential s minus s0 over cv so this is at constant p and this is at constant v so let me put a box around this also okay so what will be the nature of these curves we can plot them here if t is plotted against s these curves are nothing but proportional to e to the power s there are some constant but this will be basically proportional to e to the power s by cp and proportional to e to the power s by cv so they will go like this and this and so now we have to identify which one is the curve of tp which one is tv now here i should mention that these s zeros here they are different so let me put an superscript on them so s0 sp and s0 v v and p anyway we have to again use the fact that cp is greater than cv and if we calculate the slopes of this curve which is dtds and that will be proportional to cp and then exponential s by cp for tp and dtv ds will be 1 over cv exponential s by cv so now we can see as cp is greater than cv the slope of the isochoric process will be higher so here so this plot will be 
isocode and this will be isobar this is because cp is greater than cv so the slope will be higher in case of cv so the top one is the cv part so now let me just plot the correct plot properly Okay, so we have one plot and second plot where this is the ISO four that is with constant volume and this is the ISO bar with constant pressure. Now, if we look at the options, we see that option number A resembles our graphs. So, this is the correct answer. Okay. So, that was problem number 7. And I think uh, the time for today's video is already over. So, in the next video also, we will solve a few of these kind of problems and wrap up this part then from the next to next video onwards we will do something different we still have to learn about Carnot cycles and its efficiency thermodynamic potentials which is internal energy enthalpy gives free energy and helmholtz free energy we also have to learn simple statistical mechanics like partition function and those kind of things so we'll be doing those in the next two next lectures so bye for today